God bless you, everybody, beloved friends, wherever you are. I welcome you to this Lenten evening spiritual talk. Um, in this platform, we share the word of God so as to encourage and strengthen ourselves in the spiritual journey of this season of Lent so that we may be blessed by God and also increase in our journey and relationship with God. So I want to thank God for this opportunity granted to me through Father Santos Mario to share his words and counsel with this um, wider global audience and platform. I do not take this opportunity and privilege for granted. I pray God to reward you handsomely and therefore let us um, bow down our heads and pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of the faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, your mercies are seen. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Precious Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come into your presence that we might hear from you. Your word is life, your word is spirit, your word quickens, your word, O oh God, in living source and in powers us O oh god to reflect you and to take dominion over this world and over our circumstances and situations lord as we come we crave to hear from you your word O oh god is the bread of life feed us this morning O oh god charge us with your spirit through your word father lord may we be transformed and enter into intimacy with you and koinonia with you may we be transformed as lord god we stay in your presence and as we hear your word thank you precious father thank you adonai for in jesus mighty name we pray amen dear friends the topic we are sharing this morning is deepening our prayer life as means of communication with god and the test for this topic is matthew chapter 6 we are going to read from verse 7 um, through verse 13 verse 7 through verse 13 matthew chapter 6 the gospel of matthew now when you look at the verse 7 of matthew chapter 6 even though we are supposed to read from verse 7 through 13 but let us just begin or let's just take that one line there that is verse 7 and I'm reading with good news version. He says, when you pray, when you pray, dear friends, Jesus here was about to begin a discourse, was about to take his disciples on the lecture of the importance of prayer. And he began by not saying, if you pray, he said, when you pray, it means that he wants to here indicate that prayer is a character that man is meant to be known for and that is why trying to elaborate this in his parable in luke chapter 18 verse 1 he put it this way when he brought about the parable of you know praying and not getting discouraged he said man ought always to pray and never be discouraged men ought always ought here means or is the grammatical structure that tries to undertone the fact that prayer is the characteristic nature of man man if found not praying then that his nomenclature as man is put to question in the eyes and in the plan of god god created man to be a being of prayer man is not man for god 
man is not man that is known as coming from god what we normally call man of god meaning that one that man that is of god that proceeds from god that is given birth to by god he can never be such person for god god man if he's not praying so prayer is the life that should characterize characterize the children of god characterize man so jesus is saying when you pray he now started giving them the modality or the methodology by which they may pray well now our topic today says that we need to deepen our prayer life so he's not trying to say we're not praying he knows the topic knows we are praying but it is saying that we need to deepen it because deepening prayer or prayer is the means by which we communicate with god communication here translates to a lot it has to do with intimacy it has to do with fellowship it has to do with communion koinonia that is relational life with god god's intention is to enter into a new dimension of his existence which is to enter into relation with the being which he called man you know that god is a multi-dimensional being god is infinite you cannot know enough of god in fact there is nothing you would know that you will know god in totality that is why he told moses that i am who i am meaning that i am whatever i reveal myself to you as and that is why looking at the history of men who have walked with god you discover that they have come to know god in many ways and that's why they give him many names at any point god manifests or reveals himself in the one dimension or the other they capture him in that name they call him the god that provides that is yahweh jireh they call him the god that protests they call him the god that he is raphael they call him the god that delivers they call him el shaddai adonai elohim raphael all sorts of times and moments when god manifested himself he manifested a new dimension you know before the creation of time and the creation of man god was there and god already have been making creations the beings of the angelic have been already created before time began and we know that god did not create the angelic beings into beings of koinonia into beings of intimacy yes that's why you can't see any place where you hear in the bible god will say i love this angel i love their angel it is only in the creation of man that you discover god saying behold my beloved son or you will hear those words of relationship in isaiah 54 verse 5 you hear god saying the make your maker will be your husband and all of the places he will hear the issue and the narrative and the song of love between God and no wonder when you look at what the psalmist David wrote in Psalm 8 you hear David saying when I consider everything you have created the beings that are unseen and seen the firmament the galaxies god what is man that you care for him care here means that you love him that you pamper him oh my god that you serve him what who is this being who is this being who is this being before the creation of this being oh god was manifesting himself still even to the angels and and in that being where he manifested him his benevolence and his generosity even to the 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 angelic being of of lucifer that was why he mistook the fact that that god manifested his power or allotted his power to him he thought that he had known god and he has received of the totality because whatever dimension of god you came to download oh my god it will look as if you have gotten all the whole of god but god is multi-dimensional and that was what deceived lucifer he thought that he had gotten 
oh the power of god and now he could rub shoulder and now he could declare his own government and not knowing that god is multi-dimensional he's yahweh he is who he is so for us children of god we must know that there's no amount of favor there's no amount of the dimensions of god we can have and we have enough that is why the little time and span of life allotted to us we should maximize it oh to manifest the quota and um, oh my god the quota and amount of god that you have opportunity to lay hold upon or god has allotted or approved unto you life will have is short but what we can do in god or manifest of god is immeasurable but what i want to say is this fact so god has planned in his design to manifest himself to a being of relationship and that being he called man in eden you saw him created that man created that being but what happened was that satan who have fallen out with god had become an enemy and he came to deceive man into doubting the faithfulness of god that is why when you hear the song i sang during that prayer opening prayer you would know that i sang you remember that i sang that god is faithful the faithfulness of god was what god wanted to manifest and in that he told adam and eve do this and don't do this but when satan showed up he made eve to believe that god lied if you read with goodness version of genesis 3 verse 4 and 5 you will hear satan telling eve that god lied made eve to begin to doubt god to believe that god may not be true but god's plan was to manifest his love and the faithfulness of love because you know that one of the very first and foundational characteristic of love is faithfulness is faithfulness but now god now man has lost that knowing that knowledge of the faithfulness of god having heard from satan and having been wired into doubting god and that was the reason man left the presence of god man was cast out because you can't come into god's presence if you don't have faith if you don't trust god in hebrew chapter 11 verse 6 he said if any man must come to god he must first believe that god is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him so if you must stay in god's presence if you must stay in eden if you must come to god oh faith must be the prerequisite faith must be the yastic faith must be your character but man has lost faith man has believed satan man has received a nature that now doubts god and he can't stay in the presence of god again dear friend that is the reason for the loss of eden that's the reason of the history or the secret that got man out of god's presence but man's initial nature and destiny was to stay in god's presence to communicate because god's way of transferring his dimension to a being is by speaking is by communication that's why in genesis you see the creation of the whole universe came out of the speakings of god came out of the communication of his essence in power and in creation through his word and that is why bible says in hebrew chapter 1 verse 1 he said god spoke to us in diverse ways through his prophets so god's manifestation has always been speaking but in the old testament it was two prophets but he said in our time he has spoken to us through christ jesus that you cannot relate with jesus if you don't have addition and relationship in the words of jesus and that is what the bible said jesus spoke in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 is a man cannot live on bread alone oh but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God so man as man of God is not meant to survive without do these two things word of God and the life of prayer the speakings of God and the life of prayer now when God in his love to to wait and to bring Satan to judgment, he came to us 
through Jesus Christ to pay for the offense we committed of listening and hearkening to Satan, doubting him and moving away from Eden. He has done that in Christ Jesus. He has paid the debt and the debt he paid, which is our sentence of dying because the soul that sinned must die and the wages of sin is dead. And having restored us in Christ Jesus, having done this for us in Christ Jesus, he is calling us back to that life of prayer. And that is why in Matthew chapter 6, verse 7, he says, when you pray. So now having come back to prayer, having come back to the life of communication with God, you now therefore must come to know that this life of prayer is not what you do because you want to get this from God or that from God. This is what you do because you are meant and created to become the receiver of the word of God, the receiver of the life of God, of the person of God, of the speakings of God. You are meant to be the one whom God loves and whom God relates with, whom God enters into intimacy, koinonia, aesthetic communication with so that he will commune his essence and enlarge his kingdom to the planet earth that is why he calls us again come now to me boldly to the throne of grace he says this because we have been brought back the depth of our sin have been paid we have been washed by the blood and that blood of the lamb has bible says qualified us to stand his presence day and night in revelation 12 14 revelation chapter 7 14 and 15 he said day and night in his presence so there is no more reason for thought of unworthiness or thought of condemnation because in christ Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says there is therefore no condemnation for anyone who is in Christ Jesus. So we can come boldly. So this is what we are meant to do daily basis. And by doing so on daily basis, we deepen our marriage with God. We deepen our relationship with God. We deepen our bond with God. And when that happens, you will begin to notice that we will begin to receive signals of the voice of God. Have you noticed that most of the times when you pray well, by any means or methodology of prayer, if it is by your rosary, if it is by reading your Bible, if it is by all other sorts of traditional prayer life or by worship songs, you notice that if you mean it, if you are in the business of going into God's presence, in turn into the secret place of the Most High, you will notice that you will begin to have the popping up of the words of God. You think you are remembering or think you are imagining. They, they are not the imaginations. They are just that same thing that you will hear Ezekiel say, and the word of the Lord came to me. And Habakkuk will say, and the word of the Lord came to me. And you see here John will say, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and a voice spoke to me. This is how in your own way God speaks to you. You begin to have knowings. You begin to have some feelings that even cause good pimples. You begin to remember the word of God. All of those are the ways God is communicating with you. If you will lay hold and hold firm such encounter and experiences and apply faith that is also built at the same time when you hear the words of God being spoken to you you will become a man of wonder to your generation because James says let us hold firm to the engrafted world which has the ability to save us in those engrafted words into our heart that is ability that is energy that is power that when we accept God in faith Fullness that he has manifested himself over time and move into any instruction he has given unto us, we notice that things that are beyond human comprehension they happen, and that is what prayer is meant to afford us. Prayer is meant to bring about results. 
prayer is meant to bring about manifestation of the power of God, manifestation of the glory of God. Prayer is the means by which God shows us how much He loves us. That is why even though we have been wired to be weak in our body, so that when we want to pray we are weak, prayer is that moment when the Holy Spirit comes to help us. Romans 8 verse 26 says, we do not know how to pray because we are weak, but the Spirit comes to help us. Help here means comes to care for us, comes to pamper us, comes to energize us, comes to commune with us. And it is in this communication that we have the totality of God in marriage, in oneness. Tell me who you will be when god is living inside of you when god speaks through you when the word of god echoes through you and that is why you cannot remain the same when when you are weak even though you are weak you get yourself transformed even though you have no strength you get yourself empowered even though you have been a man that is ravaged by satan in many ways you become emboldened because god is now inside of you that is why saint paul will say i don't live as you see me live as just a man it is christ living in me the life i live from hence what i live by the faith of the son of god as you see me manifest glory it is christ in me the hope of glory and this is what god has created us to be you are created to move mountains because when your faith is a living when you hear the word of god that comes to you through prayer the bible says faith comes through hearing and it cannot be other than by the hearing of the word of god when faith is applied to whatever request you make as god's child whatever spoken word that comes to you and you want to execute when faith is applied what follows is result what follows is moving mountains that's why in mark 11 23 24 he said when you pray believe that you have gotten what you have asked for he said, it shall be given unto you you cannot pray and then don't have faith and you cannot have faith and then don't pray you cannot have faith and don't have result in god i cannot have result in god if it is not by faith and by prayer may the lord bless you child of god in this lenten season may you rise to glory may you rise in power may you receive the spirit of prayer and supplication may you enter into love affair and intimacy with god may you become really a man of God and not a man of flesh, man of man, man who is simply out of Eden and who has become dust and whom Satan will ravage. Because when Satan was caused in that garden or in Genesis, man was given to him, man of flesh was given to him as his victim. That's what Bible says, you are done this Satan, dust shall be your food. And you know that man is dust because it's dust you are made from and unto dust you shall return may you never just be dust but may you be man who is representing god may you not be among the man of the world today that satan is ravaging and satan is keeping down the reason why we sin and we are kept in sin is our ignorance of the faithfulness of god ignorance of who we are in god up and until and when i came to know who i am in god i have vowed i will take the word for jesus and i will leave out the minutest dot of my ordination in christ jesus that is your portion may the lord bless you and the lord keep you may you today begin to pray and may you receive grace may you receive the help of the holy spirit may you receive the pampering the koinonia the energization of the holy spirit may you show yourself to your world as the beloved of god and as a wonder may you be a blessing to whatever environment you are planted even as you manifest god and intimacy with god and i bless you in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit god bless you dear one happy lenten season may we meet in the joy of easter when we shall again see and believe that we have resurrected with Christ Jesus. God bless you.